Hey everyone, it's the R. Sean. Welcome to another edition of the Women Business Leader Show. This show is dedicated to you, women or people who are dealing with women in the workplace that want to develop leadership systems that really allow women to get ahead and also embrace the use of uh, women in business. So uh, we see so much out there where the current systems just don't work quite the right way. Most of us want to create systems where women can succeed and can do well and, and indeed excel. So that's what this show is dedicated about. What can we tweak? What can we adjust? What can we make better so that we can have both genders working well together in the workplace and create a better environment for all of us? So that's our theme. Joining us today is Luz Dahlia Gerber. Uh, we'll get to her in just a minute, but she is the CEO and co-founder of the Michael E. Gerber Companies. Uh, she has a great knowledge of business, business systems implementation, and she's also doing a lot to bring the business world forward which is why we wanted to invite her on the show. Joining me today, as usual, is my regular co-host, Leah Woodford, a host of the Smart Fem Summit, also the editor of Smart Fem Magazine, very big proponent and supporter of women in business, particularly through the media and through other channels. So uh, always great to host with her. And our goal, of course, is to serve you, our audience. For those who don't know me as well or haven't tuned in as well, I'm the R. Sean. I'm a corporate lawyer. I help people with ownership and control of their business. That's mergers, capital raise, uh, contract negotiations, partnership agreements, basically everything that goes in ownership and control of business. I spend a lot of time looking at the future of business. We're going to get the future right. If we're really going to compete. We need to get systems where men and women can work very well together in business, and that's what this show is all about. To further that goal, we love your comments. So wherever you're watching, whether it's our Sean McBride fans on Facebook, uh, the Women Business Leaders YouTube channel, hopefully you've subscribed to that or one of our LinkedIn feeds, drop your comments because we want to hear from you. What's working for you? What challenges do you have? What can we help you with? Always the quick reminder, we don't do investment advice or legal advice on the show. For professional advice, consult your advisors. Our idea here is to get you ideas to help you advance your business. So with that, Luz Daly, I'm so excited you're joining us. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you for having me. It's my pleasure. So you... You know, you're in an interesting position, right? So, you know, Michael Gerber has the E-Myth books, and then you jumped in and really rebuilt or, or re-energized this business and taking quite the leadership role. What's it like, you know, being out there in the environment and being a leader and developing that? Well, it's interesting. It's kind of hell and heaven at the same time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you're married to, you, when you're married to a genius, then you don't know what to expect next. Here. Right. You know, that's just the name of the game. And so I praise God and I'm very grateful that I have been in this opportunity. I have become the woman that I am today because I am married to this guy. And yes. he's an Einstein, you know, as I was growing up, my favorite people uh, were Napoleon Hill and Einstein. And yeah. now I know after being with Michael for the last 20 years that I married one and God was preparing me for that. <laughs> so you never know what's going to happen. Right. And so, you know, with the work that Michael has been doing for 40 years, um, in actuality, the fact is that he was born with this message. And what he has created has touched the lives of millions of people all over the world. Yes. Schools, high schools, etc. So it's really a, pr a privilege for me to be part of this endeavor and to make sure that the legacy that he, he came in with it's something that's left for generations to come. So it's really about transforming the lives of other people. Right. That you in with. And yeah. I just want to jump in real quick and say, um, Liz, being married to somebody that's powerful, it is very true that behind every successful man is a woman who is right there propping him up and making sure that, you know, everything is going his way. So props to you. Thank you. Thank you. And I tell you, um, it's really been an interesting message for me as a woman. What I've discovered working with a lot of women throughout life is that the more we get into our own power, it's easy for us to empower and support our lovers, right? I mean, it's, it's just nature. It doesn't take away from me. It just adds to who I am. And it's been a Absolutely. privilege. Yeah, and I think what's interesting here is, you know, Leah has this going on, you know, and she works closely with her husband, both on her business at Smart Fem and then also uh, in his business. You work closely with your husband, so it's a very much a family affair. Uh, I have a lot of women business partners I work on projects with, and I think there's a very interesting overlap between the genders, right? When you get it right, it can be very powerful. 
And it sounds like that's something you're working with at the Michael E. Gerber company, right, Liz Dale? Yeah, definitely. One of the things that I personally chose on is as a mother of three and a grandmother of five, I want to make sure that mothers get to do what mothers came here to do, is have babies if that's what they choose to do, and then nurture them. Mm -hmm. And so I call them wow moms because mom upside down is wow. And okay. So I, I have three wow moms that work with me right now. And they work with me part time and they get to take their babies to school and take care of them and put them to naps and take them to the zoo, whatever they wish to do. And yet they're here to support our mission that is about to transform the lives of many people all over the world. So yeah. it's really about being centered as a woman and, mm -hmm. know, you know, it goes back to knowing your power, knowing that you came in with the womb, you're here to create and you're here to nurture. And when you can get your power and know that no one can take it away but yourself, it's a pretty amazing space to be. Yeah. You know, it's, it's a theme that's very similar to when I, when I did my TEDx talk, one thing I wanted to tell people is, you know, women don't have to act like men, you know, and I'm doing the statistical studies and I looked at how men and women are different. And, and generally we are different, right? There's exceptions. There's women with, you know, that act a lot like men. There's men that act a lot like women and that's, that's okay. But statistically, we're in different pools and we bring different qualities. And I, I hear that from you, Liz Dale. You're right. You're saying, I embrace the qualities I bring to the workforce or I bring to the business as a woman. And I'm not going to try to fight that. I'm going to embrace it and utilize it for me and my team. Yeah, but, you can't fight it. You know, <laughs> yeah. the well, there's, there's books the out there that tell you to fight it. There's books out there again? that you can buy that will tell a woman to act like a man if she wants to get ahead. Yeah, I've never done that, so I, you know, I can comment on that. I've always been feminine. I believe that being having an orgasmic life <laughs> comes from having a desire for something bigger than oneself. Right. And so as long as I'm joyful in what I do and I source my husband, I, I'm not, I haven't been forced into this position. I am yeah. married to an amazing human being that's really up to big transformation for the world, and yeah. that's a big game for me. And we together are bringing something to the world that's not available in one Rolls Royce, what I call our school. Yeah. And I, and I know Michael's mindset is very collaborative. He's always innovative and thinking. But what's it like being a woman that's with such a strong male leader? What is it like? How does that dynamic work behind the scenes? Yeah, you just get out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> I can relate. I can so relate to that statement. Coming, when you see the train coming, just get out of the way. <laughs> I mean, so, that's all you do. And one of the things that I learned from a little girl is to be an empathetic listener mm -hmm. uh, for different reasons. And so I listen well, and he speaks nonstop. So it's an opportunity for me to just listen and see what are the le lessons that are coming out and how do we take this mastermind that... He, he has no other thing to do than to pour in what's coming in through him. And how do we organize it? And how do we deliver it to make a difference to him, to me, and to the people that we're touching? Yeah, so it sounds like, and I, and I, wanna, I, wanna, I wanna see if I hand this right for our audience and, and correct me if I'm, but <laughs> you're taking your sphere, he's taking his sphere, and you're letting the two kind of play together in a, in a very harmonious way. Yes. That's my goal is the mind, right? He, although he comes from the heart 100%, he was mm -hmm. born with this, right? And you can't do it unless it comes from the heart. You have to have the passion. So he's the mind. He's the one who was born with this message, the transformation of the world, 100%, no matter what. It's always been about that. Since I met the guy in 1997, that's who he was and that's who he is. And that's who he will be till his last breath, period. Now, I come from the spiritual aspect and meditation and yoga and fitness and taking care of my body and honoring my body because through my body, then I can get the promptings and the messaging that I can make a difference in other, in other people's lives. So together, we have more of these two areas together. I don't interfere with him. He doesn't interfere with me. We just collaborate together in order to bring this message to the people that's really going to make a difference to them. And it isn't for them to do what we do. It's for them to follow the processes that we have created and documented and systematized and the work that he has done in the last 40 years and the work he has done in the last 20 years since he's been with me, where yeah. we now teach people how to start anything with a dream, a vision, a purpose, and a mission. If you don't have that, you don't need to go into client fulfillment because what are you going to create? 
right? A hole in the wall. And who's going to go in there? So it's really about getting aligned. The thing that keeps a couple together, and this is a lesson that I've learned over life, is to be aligned with a goal that's bigger than both of you and yeah. take it out to make a difference to people in the world. And when you're there, there's nothing that can separate that. I love that message. I think that's very powerful. And I think it's powerful for you know couples, also powerful for business partners, right? Because I do a lot of work with business partners and those bigger goals will help um, alleviate a lot of the small tensions of a cup in a business partner. You know, and it's so funny because um, I interviewed Alice Cooper and his wife, Cheryl Cooper, and she has been with him since she, they were, she was 18 and they've been touring together and she pretty much said exactly the same thing. And here's my, here's my little interpretation. If you can work with somebody and not kill them and still enjoy waking up with them every day, then you're doing it. It's a keeper. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I mean. If you just get out of the way, you'll just be fine. <laughs> right? Yeah. Oh, yes. I've seen that train, or in my case, plane coming many times, and I know it's time to just get out of the way. <laughs> yeah. So, so Lucy, you talked about a 20-plus year history of working with Michael, and, you know, you've got a very good dynamic. You're, you know, for, for the listeners that haven't, been as familiar with Michael E. Gerber companies, you know, you, you have a very powerful role, right? And you actually are out there, you're driving a lot of the marketing and the new products coming out and the events that are happening. So you're, you're, you've taken a very strong role. You definitely have whole spheres of influence that Michael isn't involved in. Michael's got stuff he's doing that you're not involved in. But in the early days, there probably was some, you know, tension or some finding what these boundaries or what these areas of influence were like. What, can you talk to people just about what that can look like in a relationship or in a business partnership between a man and woman? How do you determine, you know, who does what and, and set up those lines of demarcation? Yeah, we, we get very clear of what are the roles and who's going to take care of them. So in our company, he's our chairman and he's a creator. He's the chief aggravator and oh. the chief chairman, right? So he comes up with the ideas and let's do it this way. And I think this, and he writes, consistently you know he gets sends me emails and we have to do this and we have to do that and this is the email that has to go out to the people etc cetera, etc cetera. so i take everything that comes in i organize it and then i fit it in into what i'm working on because ultimately i'm working on to fulfill i'm responsible for his mission right this is what we have declared so it is my duty to make sure that that happens now if i'm going to consistently be working on new 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 which i have for many years then we'll always be creating new, 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 and it won't be established in a way that's going to make a difference to other people. So when we launched Radical U last year, when he says, when are we going to do something or what are we going to do? I said, let's do it March 4th. It's the only day on the calendar that gives you a command, March 4th. So let's go ahead and do it then. And once we get started, then, of course, I knew nothing about what I was doing or how I was going to do it, but that didn't matter. What matters was that he and I were both aligned, that we are transforming the world. The small business and entrepreneurship is what he has been doing forever. Now we're doing it online. So how do we take that organization and begin working on it? And my job is to make sure that every day I take actions that are forwarding what it is that he and I have aligned with. If we weren't aligned, then we would be doing something different. But we are aligned and we are transforming people. Gotcha. So you've really, you, you've aligned yourself, you've got this goal mission, and then you've sat down and done it. It sounds a lot like some of what you would see in the e-myth, which is you've got clear lines of responsibility, you've set up a process within your business. I mean, you've, you've delineated things between the two of you. Yeah, and you know, sometimes he'll come up and he'll say, oh, let's do this or that. Great idea, because he always has great ideas. And I just have to table it in the pot where it belongs, because right now we're working on this. And I can't get distracted into that because I'm working on this and this is moving forward. And given that I, the one who's responsible for making sure that this mission is fulfilled, then I have to stay focused where I am. I never negate anything he says or comes up with because it's all creative. It's all beautiful. And sometimes upon pondering upon whatever he just said, sometimes it throws me. But And it's my opportunity to say, okay, that doesn't fit right now. So let me put it over there and let me come and revisit it tonight or tomorrow. And usually when I do, I can see that there's wisdom in what he just said. 
and that it would be prudent for us to take action or execute whatever he just implemented newly. And, and his job is to tell me how to do it and what he's thinking because he's the mastermind, right? Mm -hmm. My job is to organize it and create it and attract the people that we together can come to create what it is that we're here to do. Yes. So you've got, uh -huh. you've got a very interesting dynamic. Of course, you two are husband and wife, but you know, we'll also see this in, in teams where we have a man and woman working together. You know, what do you, what do you do? And, and I mean, I can see that you're just, you're the born executive. You, you take it very comfortably. You love it. But <clears throat> what do you do to set those boundaries or limits to say, okay, I'm the CEO. I understand you're a powerful male leader and I, I'm sure there's other women sitting in this situation, which is why I'm asking that. How do you say, this is my area of authority. I've got it. I'm running with it. You keep your area of authority. I respect you. We're moving forward. How, how do you, how do you do that? Yeah, very lovingly. Okay. <laughs> Amen. A woman never wants to castrate her man, right? Yes. So right. it's really about honoring. It's always about being empathetic. Mm -hmm. And right now I have a rule that if I ask my husband to proofread or do something or a question, he'll give me three answers. That's great, which means I'm not interested in looking at that now. So I will, I will revisit it later or that sucks, let me do it again, or I don't have the room for it right now. So depending on how he responds, I know what my actions are. And either one, whichever one he comes up with, I already know. He's already taught me that I don't have the room in my brain at this moment for that, so just revisit. Even though he didn't say that, I know that I can come back later or the next day with the same situation, and he'll respond differently. He'll yes. give me what I'm looking for. So it's really about, A, me being clear of mm -hmm. what it is that I'm requesting, right? Because clarity is king. So when yeah. I ask him a very specific request, and I do it lovingly, and without attachment that he's going to give it to me right there or later, it doesn't matter. Or he sometimes I'll find something, you guys, and I'll say, wow, I found this that you wrote whenever, and he will be so grateful. And sometimes he'll put it aside, and he won't even read it. And yeah. that's okay with me because my finding it was my gift to him, whether he accepts it and uses it, it's his. And sometimes months later, he will pick something up and say, where did this come from? I said, oh, I gave it to you last month. It's like, oh, that's great. So it's really about being clear, making the request, knowing when to revisit, and also being detached. Because if I was to be detached and have that stop me from what I'm doing and where I'm going, then we're not going to accomplish what we are committed to. Yeah, so you've got the bigger goal in mind. Leah, were you going to jump in there? Yes. Yeah, I was just going to say, um, uh, Luz Delia, I would, I would really relish the opportunity to interview you and Michael for my show, which airs internationally on Amazon Prime, because um, it's really kind of fun to watch the husband-wife dynamics on camera. <laughs> you know, it is because... <laughs> Like I said, if you can work with somebody and not kill them and still, you know, go, go to bed happy with them every night, you know, <laughs> there's a story there. <laughs> there is a big one. <laughs> and I know a lot of women would love to be able to know those secrets, but I, I think the men would too. You know, how, how do you, you know, and, and so many people are being forced into entrepreneurism now, now that, um, you know, opportunity, you know, 30 years at corporate America just isn't available anymore. Yeah. So. So is there a question for me on that? Because I could say a lot about that. <laughs> yes. Well, 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 what I was saying is I would love, I would, I'm just putting it out there. I would love the opportunity to interview you both because um, people are going to have to embrace entrepreneurism, whether they want to or not. It's coming. Yeah, yeah definitely. And we would love to. Michael would love to. Now, when Michael is on stage and I'm around, he's always in honor of me. He doesn't ever talk about the lion in me, right? <laughs> the lion is in me. So it would, be, it would be a very interesting dynamic for us both to be on the show with you. We'd love that. Uh, I, think, I think our viewers would really love that, too. Yeah, fantastic. Absolutely. Well, well he's dynamic. I mean, he's totally amazing. So you'd love him. And, of course, I will fit in as he remember he's a speaker right and yeah. i'm the empathetic listener so in a show that's the same dynamic 
Yeah, well, but it's just, it just tells you how you play your, your roles, but yet you keep your authority going. And I think there's a lot of lessons out there for people, you know, whether you're just business partners, whether you're romantically involved, whether you're a male, female team, I think a lot of people can learn a lot from that. And I think we've learned but, a lot. From but there's some gold there. Yes, there's a just lot of gold there. Uh, Luz Delia, being the empathetic listener, that is a very, very powerful role, and a lot of people are not aware of that. Yeah. And you, you learn a lot from it, and then you, from what you've said on this show, which I think is driving home Leah's point, is you're taking those lessons from Michael and from what you listen, and you're using that to propel forward for the goal in your sphere of authority. <laughs> exactly. Yes. And you can't do it any other way. If you right. wish to be successful, because I also have to be an empathetic listener with each of my team members, right? They right. all have ideas, they all want to do this, they, you know, whatever. You just have to listen to it and find out where, where they are, where they're coming from. Because ultimately, one of the things, you know, I'm a preacher's kid. So my daddy always said, always go to God and ask for questions. Because he knows all the answers, right? <clears throat> so ultimately, sometimes somebody may say something, but you have to forgive them because they don't know what they said intentionally yes. they didn't mean to hurt you or have anything other than what they're there to say so being empathetic listener also means having a big heart and loving people and forgiving them at the moment and being detached detachment has been the biggest lesson for me awesome well Liz Day, why don't you just talk a little about what you guys are developing for the future i know you've got some exciting projects coming up some big stuff so why don't you just give the listeners an idea of what y'all are doing and how they connect with how they can connect with you and your your upcoming stuff awesome well <clears throat> we just launched radical you last year and we are in the second year of it right now it's a five-year school we will be accredited we will be the only unique school of its kind in the world and of course it will be led by michael e gerber and his team and I believe that the place for people to find out about us is to go to RadicalU.com and discover why we're there. We're also doing a dreaming room. It, this is kind of a special, unique dreaming room that we're leading because Michael will turn 83 this June wow. 20th. Yeah. And um, he begged me not to give him a gay love party again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'll tell you that story in, a, in another time. But I promised him I wouldn't. So this time it's not really a party. We're just celebrating by him leading a dreamy room. People continuously ask, can we do a dreamy room? Can Michael do a dreamy room? We want to be back in the dreamy room. So we're bringing that back. He's going to lead it. Yeah, it's the dreaming. Go ahead, Liz Daddy. It will be a three and a half yeah. dreamy room. Yep. And um, it will be a huge opportunity for people to come play with us. And you can go to newdreamingroom.com and find out about it. And we are doing some amazing, amazing things. I mean, it's just really taking into form. For example, I'd love to invite you to be on our Awakening the Entrepreneur show that we do twice a month. As an um, owner, because you both have businesses and you have something of value that you can support our students in our school, right? And yep. I have a complete organization that I'm still working and creating on how to bring the massive exposure and how to create an amazing school where you eventually become faculty members and bring your information to our students and we promote you. And, you know, so it's like I'm always creating all the additional ways how to take this message to the world in yep. a collaborative way so that you know, you, the three of us, we're pretty much, we're done, right? So we <laughs> have to be thinking of the baby and the kids that aren't born yet. How do we create a future today that's going to make a difference for them? And I'd like to close with a quote, which is one of my favorites. There's two from Einstein that are really amazing. One is we can live our lives as, as if something's a miracle, or we can live our lives as if everything is a miracle. And I wake up joyously every day thinking and feeling that everything, every step for me is a miracle, even when I have a flat tire. There you go. <laughs> so Einstein said, never give up on what you really want to do. The person with big dreams is more powerful than the one with all the facts. There you go. Amen. 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 <laughs> so well, making it up as you go is really enthralling for me. And yep. That's what gets me up out of bed in the morning and puts me down to bed in my meditation, being in gratitude, 
that I'm alive and I'm doing something so big that none of us, including Michael and I, have no clue what 100 years will look like just because we said so. Yeah, I love it. I love it. I think it's a fantastic message. I think you provide so much information to women business leaders out there. I think some people are going to really take home some strong lessons for how they can uh, run things and run the internal dynamics within their business. So, Liz Dahlia, thank you for being an amazing guest. Uh, to our viewers, pat yourself on the back. I mean, this is this is big stuff, and it's it's groundbreaking stuff. So, think about how you can work on having those great dynamics between men and women, women and women, men and men in your organizations to really take advantage of who we are internally without trying to fake it, without trying to try to force everything into a specific box. So uh, thank you for joining us today. Make sure you subscribe to the Women Business Leaders YouTube channel. Click the bell so you get the notifications. Uh, check us out online at planningdoneright.com. You can see past episodes, upcoming episodes. You can also get on our email list. So thank you, everybody, for joining us. Thanks for making it such a great episode. And thanks again, Luz Delia. Thank you. Nice to meet you, Luz Delia.